Bioenergy can help build Haiti's future. Families and small businesses know their heavy reliance on charcoal and wood is a poverty, respiratory disease, deforestation trap. Ethanol from Haitian sugarcane can help. Public-Private Alliance Foundation led a consultancy for the Inter-American Development Bank focusing on stove use, fuel production, and building awareness of the possibilities. The consultancy expanded upon a project that PPAF and others had earlier begun. In this work, we monitored stove use and efficiency with representatives of a hotel, an artisan's association, and a group of low-income mothers in Jacmel, and with community groups in Leogan, Haiti. Our main focus was on fuel production. We brought in several consultants in different fields and explored ways to increase the availability and decrease the price of cookstove fuel. We started with a visit to the famous Barbancourt Rum Company. We also toured the Darbonne Sugar Mill. This huge installation is open for two months a year. During that peak season, it produces 16,000 drums, each 55 gallons, of syrup from the nearby farmers' fields. During other months, farmers crush their cane at rather small distilleries called Gildives and distill mostly beverage-grade alcohol called Clarem. One of our consultants owns a farm in Leogan. We visited it and examined the quality of sugar cane in the field. We took samples for analysis of sugar content, fresh or having been harvested one, two, or three days earlier. A main concern was the operation of the Gildives in Leogan, including their efficiency, profitability, and ability to make both Claran and the much higher alcohol percentage needed for cook stove fuel. The Gildives we saw were often antiquated, but they created a saleable product. We took samples of the different liquids involved in distillation, water, juice, syrup, fermentation mash, alcohol, and waste products. These were sent for sophisticated analysis at our consultant's headquarters in Kansas. Fermentation for several days in open tanks is the traditional way to start the process, but there are many disadvantages, especially in allowing unwanted bacteria to enter, eat sugar, and leave acidic waste, and in allowing the yeast to become stressed and produce glycerol instead of alcohol. Gildives within the city limits process drums of syrup, which are diluted with water and added to the fermentation tanks. But stopping drum holes with sugarcane plugs allows entry of bacteria into the contents, and the well water is usually contaminated too. These reduce the ethanol production from what could be. But it's easy to take actions and obtain improvements. Gildive owners have been using baker's yeast in their fermentation tanks. Our consultants introduced them to yeast specifically geared to ethanol high performance. The consultants agreed to supply the farmers with improved yeast, which could be sold through members of their association. Fresh sugar juice usually goes from the crusher through an open trough to an open holding tank before being pumped to a fermentation tank. This results in a sizable loss of sugar value. Contamination from bacteria and the buildup of biofilm can eat 20% of the production potential within 30 feet of the crusher. PVC pipes of all sizes are available at low cost in hardware stores and on the street. Replacing the open troughs of a Gildive with clean piping that is washed regularly can bring a major return on investment. The rollers in the mill or crusher must be in good working order to squeeze the most juice from the cane. Most of those seen, though, were worn smooth or had gaps between the surfaces from long use. This reduces the amount of juice obtained and leaves the bagasse wet, which reduces efficiency and profitability. Reprocessing of rollers can be done at a machine shop in Leogan. The cost per roll is about US $1,000 each. Having refurbished rollers can improve the efficiency of the extraction of sugar by an estimated 20 to 22 percent. Work in the Gildives is often physically demanding and dangerous. Providing safe and healthy conditions for employees is important for them and profitable for the company. Clean and safe working areas are possible and important in the Gildives. Our consultants found higher quality measurements in the processing of sugar juice or syrup for alcohol and better working conditions at the Gildives that were well maintained. In every Gildive we saw, the water for cooling the distillery's condensing coils is poured off as hot water. This amounts to throwing away free money. Hot water can easily be captured and used for cleaning the system, for diluting syrup or juice, 
for preheating mash to reduce fuel for boiling, for employee showers, and for laundry. Gildives within the city limits burn mountains of wood, costing as much as 200 US dollars a week to boil syrup and make alcohol. People in Leogan are at risk of respiratory disease and lymphatic disease. Neighboring communities complain of deforestation. More efficient production and fuel other than wood can be a help. Gildives outside the city burn bagas for free from the cane crushed and dried. But much remains unused. Improvements to distillery processing and heat control could result in even greater amounts available. Additional revenue can be generated from the surplus. Decomposed bagas makes fertilizer for farming. Bagas bundles, logs, or briquettes may be able to replace some of the wood or charcoal in town. Many factors influence the quality and the percentage of alcohol in the final product. Among these, monitoring and controlling temperature are critical at three points in the distillation process the boiler, the column, and the water for cooling. Ideal recovery percentage occurs when the system operates at optimum temperature. Alcohol boils at 173 degrees Fahrenheit. The distillation process extracts alcohol from a watery mash. Storing the finished product in an easily opened wooden container allows moisture from the air back into the alcohol, decreasing its potency. This is a problem for Claran at drinking grade and is much more so for cook stove fuel at 95% alcohol. Tight plastic drums are a better way to maintain quality and purity of the Claran or biofuel over time. They are not expensive and they provide a good return on investment. The consultancy also built awareness that ethanol cook stoves and fuel can improve lives and livelihoods. We held a public meeting and compared charcoal with ethanol cook stoves at the site of the childhood home of one of our team members. That home had been destroyed in the 2010 earthquake. In Leogan, we made presentations on two radio stations. In Port-au-Prince, we met with representatives of the Ministry of Agriculture as well as business leaders. In New York and Washington, we participated in meetings of the Global Alliance for Clean Cookstoves. Again in Leogan, we held a public meeting to demonstrate the improved versus the usual practices for fermenting and distilling. We responded to questions and offered cookstoves and fuel for sale. The IDB project supervisor came to see firsthand the nature and results of our work. A crew of journalists and TV technicians came from Port-au-Prince to conduct interviews and record the event. We also answered questions from journalists. They wanted to know about the pilot project studies and the findings and how these might relate to activities and policy development at the national level. The head of the team for promoting and monitoring ethanol cookstoves and fuel in Leogan engaged people at that meeting. Please note the gallons of fuel are denatured with Bitrex, colored with blue food dye, and labeled with instructions so everyone will know this is fuel for the kitchen, not a beverage to drink. Here's a picture of the team at the early stages of the consultancy. And here's a picture of the team at the conclusion of the consultancy with the Inter-American Development Bank, or BID, Banque Inter-American de Développement. 